Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi and welcome to Postscript. I'm Lou Ann Riley, the Grow Group and Discipleship Director here at FaithBridge, and I'm here with Pastor Ken, who just brought part two of Overcome, and we talked about overcoming pride. Welcome, Pastor Ken. Thanks. Good to have you back here. All right, so overcoming pride, this was a big one. We had lots of questions come in today. Struck a nerve. <laughs> Struck a nerve. And as you said, <laughs> oldest sin yep. affects the most people, been around, mm-hmm. can all point at ourselves and see, mm-hmm. take that magnifying glass and look at ourselves and see. Yeah. And so we had a lot of questions coming around there. So okay. um, let's just get some of the questions out of the way. Let's get this one out of the way okay. because being in an election year and uh, yeah. we had quite a few questions come around of the political nature mm-hmm. um, and the pride that we're kind of seeing in the news and some of our candidates. Yeah. Um, can you speak to that? Sure. Well, I can say two things. Okay. having read a little bit about Abraham Lincoln and his life and his willingness to be uh, self-deprecating and humble to own his shortcomings. um, I wish we had a candidate who was like that, um, who was a viable candidate. Um, That said, I suppose it shouldn't surprise us that we are where we are in culture as it is because really the the uh, vice of pride has been <laughs> virtuized mm-hmm. by th- several different aspects of the world uh, such as Hollywood, mm-hmm. uh, the media, you know, and so it makes sense, doesn't it, that finally the next domino uh, to be affected is the world of politics, where you're almost exalted for being arrogant uh, and prideful. And so I, I suppose it shouldn't surprise us that it's come to that because it's just sort of the next step in our culture's uh, toppling of dominoes, but we've been seeing this in media, in uh, movies and, and all for years. Mm-hmm. So here we are. I know, and you talked today about the inverted kingdom and how sure. what we, that does, it doesn't look the same for us. No, it doesn't. And, and this is where I'm afraid American Christianity has been diluted mm-hmm. in so many situations. Uh, or like we talked about uh, several weeks ago, uh, so, sort of we've, we, we really think, people really think that the Christian track and the worldly track can just be so parallel that you just sort of bounce back and forth. Instead of realizing, no, Christ came and laid tracks at the crossroad and said, if you're gonna follow me, you're gonna go this way. And there's nothing really similar. Up is down, down is up in my kingdom. Uh, rich is poor, poor is rich. First is last, last is first. It's, it's a different thing. So when politicians come along today, Uh, it's very popular for them to say, I'm a Christian. I don't think that many of them even know what that means, Mm. Uh, uh, let alone have they really brought themselves to the humility Mm -hmm. that one must come to to become a Christian, Mm. to say, I need a Savior, and I understand what the cross was. I think they just say, I'm a Christian because it's in vogue, Mm. and they think, well, that's worth some votes out there. So I'll say it. Mm-hmm. Shame on us and shame on Christians who can't tell the difference or who fall for it, mm-hmm. um, I think. Yeah. So a lot of the truths that you, you brought to us today, um, a lot of the questions came in just really wanting to know how do we apply some of these sure. questions around that. So looking at this, um, give us some examples of how we apply just struggling with pride on a day-to-day basis, meaning how do we prevent these thoughts from coming into our mind? How do we overcome this sure. on a day-to-day basis? Yeah. Well, two things come to mind. Okay. Uh, one of them I talked pretty much about, but I'll say it again. You've got to come back to the gospel. 
uh, to, to, to the, the concept of the fact that uh, God stands on the other side of the tennis court. And so don't fall for the temptation of, uh, you know, looking into the crowds and patting yourself on the back. The moment you do that, go back to the gospel. Remind yourself, where would I be if it weren't for Jesus? Where would I be if it weren't for grace? Where would I be if it weren't for forgiveness? I would be lost. I would be doomed. I would be headed for a Christless, uh, damnable eternity. And take yourself back and re-gospel yourself. Because right there, you can, you can write the, the ship many times if you remember. Oh, yes, because you've taken your eyes off of Jesus. You've put your eyes on other people or situations, and now you're benchmarking against the wrong thing. To which God says, I'll serve to you if you need me to serve. Um, just to chop you down again, to remind you. Um, so I think it comes back to gospeling ourselves again, and then clothing ourselves, which is that active verb kind of concept. I'm actively going to put on the apron of uh, the servant. I'm actively going to put on the overalls of humility. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means uh, in the workplace or in the neighborhood or the school or, or whatever. If something needs to be done, I'll just do it. Maybe I won't even call attention to the fact I did it because even there, my motives could be a little bit mixed. So mm -hmm. I'll just put on the overalls of humility and I'll just do what needs to be done. I'll just serve and move on. Mm -hmm. And uh, in so doing, I mean, that's what Christ did. He came and all he did was serve. Mm -hmm. um, and so... Go and do likewise. Okay, I have a question around the serving. Sure. This person asks, serving to help eliminate pride, does it ever get any easier or is it always hard? Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it gets easier, um, but it gets more meaningful. W let's use marriage as the great example. When two people get married, uh, ostensibly they're marrying for these noble uh, virtuous reasons but everyone in the deep depths of their soul gets married because they're thinking you're going to make my life better you're going to make my life happier at the end of the day I'm getting married because it's all about me <laughs> and then you get married and you I'm not sorry. well right <laughs> and you realize you were thinking the same thing oh my gosh and we're really at an impasse but then it, people that work through that in their marriage and realize, okay, there really is something to this serving. If I will give my all to you and I'll serve and humble myself and you'll do that uh, as well, as we both do that, then what happens? Well, marriage then becomes fun and actually meaningful and enjoyable, uh, you, you know, well beyond tolerable. And in fact, some of the, the, the better, more touching stories you hear of couples that have been married 50 and 60 years, uh, somewhere along the way, they learned that mm -hmm. lesson. Now, did it become easier? Well, no, you, you still, I don't really want to do it, but it just becomes more natural to say, but I will. Mm -hmm. Because I know what'll happen if I don't, and I know what'll happen if I do. Mm -hmm. And so why, do I, why would I have to throw myself back into that classroom and learn the hard way? Let's just do what I know the Lord calls me to do and trust that he'll supply um, the, the grace that I need in the meanwhile and the benefits uh, on the other side of it, which many times, not every time, but many times we experience um, uh, as a result. So I, I would say uh, not exactly easier, but better. Good. Okay, so in the sermon today, you mentioned two truths. A sign of pride in a person is comparing themselves with others, finding themselves better, and also that it is important to talk to Christians who display prideful behavior about the importance of humility. Sure. How can someone point out pride in another Christian without being prideful themselves? Sure, very carefully. Mm. Uh, there but for the grace of God go I, and so you better really be checking your motives. Um, and you better really be m making sure, am I doing this because I'm hacked off at him and I don't want to look at the log in my eye. I'm going after that speck by golly in his. Here I come. Mm. Well, you'll get chopped down ultimately if that's your spirit. But on the other hand, uh, 
in any number of situations we see in scripture the admonition no go to your brother go to your sister help them see the perilous situation that they are in that they might be restored and come to a point of clarity that they would repent um, and and turn around so you do it uh, fully aware of your need for grace mm. not losing sight of that keeping that in the forefront of your mind the whole way through um, and uh, I, I can just illustrate in several instances uh, one of the, the, the most uh, truth-talkingest brother in my life is Pastor Dan and has been for years and hopefully I am in his life as well. And uh, I think of any number of times over the years when he's come to me and uh, about something that he sensed in my soul just wasn't quite right. And maybe it was pride-related, maybe it was other-related, but many times... He just comes in his gentle, mm. um, loving uh, way and says, you know, brother, uh, I just got a question that I've been having rolling around in my head. And even just by the way he phrases the question, uh, I'm nailed. Like, oh, well, that was good. But I would never question his motives, Dan loves me, and I know that, and I love him. You know, and, and so this is just Christian community working uh, in a healthy way. Now, if you're at odds with someone and... Or maybe don't have a relationship. You have no them. relationship, or it's a boss mm -hmm. that just fired you. Probably that's not going to be the person that you can um, have that conversation mm -hmm. with uh, because the context is, is never going to be quite right. Uh, in that circumstance. Okay, so um, in this question here, um, this person writes in and says that as they were listening to your message, they're realizing that in a situation, in a relationship in their life, that pride has been a factor. Mm -hmm. um, so much so that the relationship is broken um, and they're not speaking anymore. And during the prayer at the end of the service, um, they were beginning to pray about what could be a next step to mending this relationship. And we're wondering um, what advice you have for this person or for any person who maybe today was in that situation sure. thinking, you know, my pride maybe has gotten in the way of some relationships, what yeah. what do I do now? Well, good for you. Realizing it, I would say, that's the first thing. Um, I, I think the second thing would be, you're gonna have to realize uh, what you do now may not mend the relationship. Uh, some relationships are uh, uh, unreconcilable at this mm -hmm. point. There's just been too much trust that has been uh, destroyed and it's not going to come back. So, so I can't just say, so here's your one, two, three, and you'll both be happy again uh, by next Friday. You know, I can't say that. But what I can say is uh, good for you realizing that your pride got in the way and maybe damaged th this relationship and if there is any reconciliation to be found, and reconciliation is two directional, uh, it will be because you humbled yourself. And so that's a good place to start. Humble yourself and change whatever it was that you're now realizing, I should have changed that. By God's grace, get to therapy, get to... Uh, you know, a 12 step uh, a program, start working the steps and admit yourself to inpatient, uh, take drastic steps, um, pay, start paying back your debts. I don't know what it is, but, but you need to start setting those things right, putting aside your hopes of a restored relationship. You've got to do the right thing. And you've got to clean up yourself by God's grace now that he's awakening you um, so that you can say, uh, as Paul did in Romans 12, I think it is, um, as far as it is from me to you, mm. I want there to be peace. Mm -hmm. I can't control if, if you're going to reciprocate. And I may have lost the privilege, the right, the hope that it would ever be reciprocated. Uh, but as far as it is from me to you, uh, I'm going to do right. A and uh, when we do that, we have to make sure that we're doing it with the understanding, you don't owe me anything. 
uh, that's not why you're doing it. You're setting things right because you're standing before God who has shown you grace and you've now been awakened to the reality. I've, boy, I've got to change. Good for you. Start in. Get help. Okay. All right, so let's look at pride from a, maybe from a different perspective. How can we be confident in um, the talents and the gifts that God has given us um, and not be, but not cross over into being prideful? Yeah, right. All right, so great example. Somebody asked Corey Tim Boom, the great uh, survivor of the Nazi concentration camps, uh, the Christian lady who with her family smuggled Jews and protected them and then she went to the concentration camp. And she became a famous Christian and, and spoke in huge Billy Graham crusades and, and became quite the, the rock star Christian of the 60s and 70s. Um, and somebody asked her that and she said, every night uh, when I'm talking with the Lord, I just take all the compliments that people have given to me. And I treat them as roses in my mind's eye. And I put all of those roses together and I put them in a vase and I say, now Lord, here, this really belongs to you mm. because you're the one who got me through that. The only reason I have this story that inspires people and moves people and gives people hope is because you sustained me when other people died in the continent, you gave me grace, you brought me out. And so these roses, they all belong to you. And I think that's a good picture for us mm -hmm. um, because God has put gifts in, into all of us and we must use those gifts. And we could be tempted by the devil to think, boy, the world is better because I'm using my gifts. No, 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 don't do that. Just say these really ultimately, every good gift comes from above. It's just because you were good and gracious to me that I, I give these back to you now, Lord. Okay, so the same question really came in around our children's achievements mm -hmm. as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, we're often proud of our kids and what they've accomplished. Should we encourage their achievements? Should mm -hmm. we encourage them? And should we be proud of the things that they, that they do? Sure. Every child needs encouragement. Mm -hmm. um, you are the mirror to your child's forming soul. Um, that, that he's, you know, that he's trying or she's trying to figure out, am I good? Am I okay? And you're the one who's saying, you can do it, son. You can do it, honey. Um, so yes, you should sur surely encourage them. I think the challenge for us behind the tapestry as parents is that then when they do to ask ourselves, now how much of my self-worth is being derived by what he's doing or what she's doing. How much am I saying when I'm at a lunch or dinner with other people? <laughs> Let me tell you about my child, you know, and, um, because that's where we've slipped over. Now we're not encouraging them. Now it, it's the spotlight's back on us. And that's where we need to go, uh-oh, uh-oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, and just remember, no, the encouragement that I'm giving to my child is because God has asked me to be a temporary uh, surrogate for him. Uh, they're not really my child. They'll be my child for 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years or till I go to heaven. But my job really is just to fill in for God, help them to realize who they are, that they're, that they're his, that they might come to know their real father so that then when I'm gone, um, they are connected to him. That's my purpose, and I give them all the love and all the encouragement that healthy parents uh, give. But I fight the battle inside my soul if I start realizing I'm deriving too much energy by his accomplishments, by her accomplishments. Good, good. Well, it's such a great message today. I can't tell you how many of the questions were really just... Thank you for yeah, yeah, the message today. And thank you for being here in Postscript. Sure. Thank you for joining us here for Postscript. We'll see you back here next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.